Today's episode of Desert Wood Days with Kathy Blaze is sponsored by Cole, Obart's Entertainment. Providing amusement, celebration, and distraction since 2013. To find out more visit us on the web at www.coleobartsent.com. I want to visit all the places nobody goes. I want to teach all the things that nobody knows. I want to grow wings, leave the coop, learn to fly. Bungee jump from the tallest building in Dubai. I want to fly around town in my UFO. I want to eat real food, not the GMOs. I want to make moves, call the shots like the boss. I want to love like I never lost. Welcome back to Desert Wood Days. And today I'd like to introduce a talented filmmaker, Mr. Isaac Joel. Hello Hi. there. How's it going? Good. Good to if, see you again. Good to see you. Oh. Thanks for joining us here Thank on season two. Thank you for having two. me back. Thank so, you. Such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. I know that you've been busy out there in the community. I've been pretty busy. I've been silent but busy. You know, uh, it's it's been a real special time for me. Uh, I'm finally glad to be talking about this. I really yes. am. I like the, the joy and the weight lifted off my shoulders after holding on to something for so long yeah. and for everyone else to be enjoying it and experiencing right. it. I know when you were here in season one, you were working on mm -hmm. your your first film. Was no, it your feature film? Yeah, yeah. We actually were showing a a, a, a piece of it at the time yes, to you guys. We, yes. we were still working on it. We were still deep in, in post-production for it. Uh, and we showed it to your to your audience, yes. and, and that got well, people really can you excited. Tell us, my audience, your, the name of the film again. It is called Augment, Augment and it is yes. available right now on Amazon Prime for yes. everybody to go rent, buy, whatever. Congratulations! Yeah, That's you. awesome. You know what I tell you? It is so nice to see that final product. When mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they've been working so mm -hmm. hard out there on it. And to see that final product and is out there on you Prime were there now. at the yes. at the screening for uh, Valor Fest. Yes, and you, I you were was. able to see it. Yes, I How was. did you feel about it? I enjoyed it. You know what? It threw me for a couple of loops there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think your audience is really going to enjoy it. I'm trying to think of what it it kind of reminded me of. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of the name of this film. I'll get to it. I'll think about it. Mm -hmm. But it, it threw me to a, for a couple of loops. It lost me because, not, not in a bad way, mm -hmm. it lost me because um, just it, just the way it was set up, it, it started, didn't it start off that It starts thing? right in, in, it in right the story. In, yeah, yes. yeah. There's no build up. There's no lead up. We drop you right, right inside the world into what it is that this father is going through. And he's... Right. Uh, at one of those group therapy meetings, uh, sessions with a bunch of strangers, and he's kind of looking for answers. He's going through a lot right now. His son uh, has a terrible condition, and mm -hmm. he's not able to afford his treatment. Mm -hmm. And there was a piece where, and I think I even asked you the question in the, mm -hmm. during the q and A. It, it's where it, it appeared as if the movie was in, ending, but then it started to another scene. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that? Yeah, yeah. We really dragged out the opening. We wanted, I think it's 15 minutes before the, the title card and the credits even come in and then the movie starts after that. Yeah. And so we're getting, I am training my audience to prepare themselves for that type of level of storytelling with me. I really love long form uh, uh, stories, uh, but I also really like to challenge the way that they're told, the format yeah. of it. Uh, one of my favorite films of all time is by Christopher Nolan uh, called Memento. Mm. And it's uh, two storylines, one that takes place in color going forward in time and one that takes place in black and white going backward in time. Yeah. And yet somehow in this confusing timeline, they both meet and intersect at the end. So ideas like that really, uh, interest me and I apply those big right. concepts. And that this. was, and that was, I can't think of, I'm sorry, I can't think of the name of that movie that um, comes to mind, And but you said the, the black and white, that type of, that mm -hmm. color, and, and I believe it was um, one of uh, old Will Smith movie with the robots and things. I, robot. I, Robot, mm -hmm. when they had like, that was the color scheme that they yes. used in that movie, and that was what 
I loved about your movie as well. Is I love colors. I don't love. I don't like the the flat, unedited look that a lot of people have adopted these days. I love color. I love contrast. I love that traditional style of when you look at it, you know that that is a movie. Right. What? Where? Where did that come from? The creation of this movie. You know, I take a lot of inspirations from from everything, every aspect, uh, part of my life. And I really wrote Augment as a passion piece for the science fiction genre. I had just walked out of the movies with my best friend, who is also the composer in this. Mm-hmm. Um, it was called uh, Possessor, Possessor, uh, about a woman who was uh, working for some secret agency and they would take over other people's bodies Mm. to fulfill their tasks, their Mm -hmm. assignments. Um, And that idea was really fascinating and how they told it in such a simple form because the root of the story was really about the woman. She's a mother, she's uh-huh. she's she's a, a wife, and she has a family. And that's the, the core and the center of it. All of the science fiction stuff, all of that is just background. It's right. just placement there for right. you to get you a little more excited and invested. Right. And so that really inspired me to write this story uh, for this character. Mm-hmm. And I, at the time, wasn't really going through anything personal in my life. It was a really good, good time in my life when I wrote it, when I shot it. And then we were in post-production f- for it. And we got terrible news on my family, uh, side that my, uh, grandfather, uh, became very ill, mm-hmm. uh, out of nowhere. And, uh, we were told we had six months and that six months turned into 40 days. And so everything was put on right. on 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 halt for a while, right. and everything that I wrote on page started to become kind of real. Everything mm. that they were talking about during the grief counseling sessions, right. uh, and the past and moving on, a lot of that stuff kind of was. Mm. I was starting to hear it from my family and from from friends, and and it became very very real. Right. And one of those things where where. Uh, Art imitates life. Right. Uh, it was a beautiful so did you time, that, though. So, d- did you put that into your work? I, after the fact, I did. You know, I came back after the funeral. I, I gave a speech, um, in front of the entire congregation, and it was it was really inspiring. And I I took that with me back to to the editing room. You know, my gran- mm-hmm. grandfather, uh, although he he was a he was a hardworking man he, he mm-hmm. worked with tools he built cars he redesigned houses but he loved watching movies and mm. he didn't realize it but he was very very educated in yeah. movies he had his own vast collection uh he was a big denzel washington fan mm. that was his his main main uh actor and, so did and you get stories a, did you so get a lot of your love for the movies from i did you? get it from him I would started to become clear that I got got this passion, uh-huh. this this hardworking ethic that I have. I got that from him. That's awesome. Yeah, and I'm sure he's very proud of you. He, yes, yes, he would be proud. As a filmmaker, and um, and I see you as a talented. I think you're very talented, and um, you're creating some good stuff out there. Mm-hmm. As a filmmaker, that's creating content that's different Mm -hmm. than what we see out there in our communities. I mean, do you feel that you're getting what you need to be able to produce what (laughs) you want to produce? Not even close. No, these, uh, these two shorts that I have on Amazon, uh, uh, Shadow Valley and now Augment, they were both completely funded by, by myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, we I paid for the studio locations. I did the driving. We used my uh-huh. car. You know, I paid for the, the the food, whatever it was that we needed. The actor's time. Uh-huh. Um, I did what I could, you know, right. for these these two projects, and I was stretched very very thin <laughs> towards well, the end. Well, you said the key word. You said you did what you could, and that's all you can do. Yeah. At the moment, is yeah. do what you can do. And I'm proud of of yeah. the the final products, and yeah. and it shows you like wow, if I can do all of this with so little, imagine what I could do with, with a lot more. Right. Yeah. Right. With money that's not even my own. <laughs> yes. 
and that's usually how people create these mm -hmm. million dollar films with money that's not their own. I had to show people what it was that I am capable of. I had to put my money where my mouth is. Right. You know, I like proving to people that I, I, I know what it is I'm talking about. Right. Um, the work speaks for itself. So I'm feeling very comfortable now with, with these projects out um, and people seeing what it is I'm capable of. We're, we're looking for investors for our next yeah. project. So Isaac, um, we were speaking about your film and um, not having everything that you may need to be able to produce the types mm -hmm. of films that you want to and having to um, pretty much fund it all by yourself. Yeah. Um, which I um, congratulate you for being able to do that because not many people can do that. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, um, speaking about your film and, and like I said, I think you're doing good things out there. Um, do you feel that um, the type of films that you're you're creating that um, I don't see if they're <laughs> above some people or uh, if 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 the um, your audience understand mm -hmm. the genre of your film? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think that it's coming across the way you want it to? I it's going to take some time. It is, you know, I because I can I know people will look. At, at this material, at any material, and, and easily categorize it as a science fiction action film or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but for me, the core, again, that I can't emphasize it enough with everything is always the, the people, mm -hmm. the, the drama, the, what, the emotional pull uh, that they're going through. And so I always put that first and foremost before anything before else. Everything. And like the genre is just a background. It's just to set up the stage. Uh -huh for these these real life stories mm. that are being told um i wouldn't say they're they're too big you know I, at the end of the day i i live to entertain people mm -hmm. it's entertainment you know so even if you know we, we we talked about it when we were when we were going through it we we're like if there's and if there's one thing that someone doesn't like about this at least the cinematography is beautiful. Yeah. At least the music is grand and loud. At least the acting is good. At least we have this. At least we have right. that. And we had it all. So we right. were confident that with all of these details brought together, we designed the the helmet ourselves. We oh. built that from scratch. Uh, the, the costumes, the headpiece yeah. that the doctor wears, uh, the costumes and the swords oh. that they battle with uh, in the sand dunes. That was a hot day for us oh. when we went out there. We we only had a couple hours out there and we were not prepared, <laughs> but they were they were troopers. They, oh. they the the cast and the crew they were there till the end. Oh. And they were really about the material the way I, I was. I I noticed that you you really go out and you put a lot of effort into it. It's not totally studio based mm -hmm. filming i mean like you said you may go out into the dunes or you may i i remember um you mentioned um being was it was in chicago or new york yes. i mean you you really put a lot into your films mm -hmm. to to entertain and to bring out this spectacular look in your films mm -hmm. so it's not that it's all on green screen in a studio mm -hmm. somewhere you're really getting out there to make it real yeah and, and I love that about what you do. Yeah, I'm the one that's right behind the camera with them. I am I am there with them all the way through it. I'm not hiding out behind some some tent looking at big screens. I, I don't have that luxury. Right. All I have is is my will, my passion, and my drive. Right. Do you, um, do you find yourself being in a lot of your films? Acting in a lot of your films? You know, I, I am not in either these these two projects. Um, I, Were you tempted? I was not tempted you at weren't? all. No, not at all. No. Not at all. I wanted to nail directing, cinematography, the oh. story. I wanted to make sure everything behind the scenes was going according to plan and let the, let the professionals take care of that first. Right. Um, and... The, the actors, the talent that we got, they were talented. Mm -hmm. They were very, very talented. The the woman that plays the doctor, Sophia, uh, she's an actress out in California, mm -hmm. and we shot her scenes out in California. Um, so we were we were really open to work with people from from all over. That's awesome. So you, I know that um, 
I'm going to move on to your new script. Yeah. I know that you have a new film coming out. Can you tell yeah. us a tad about that? Yeah. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot to tell and then there's a lot that I can't tell. Sure. I love okay. surprising my audience. Um, I love them not expecting anything. However, this time around, we want everyone to be really involved with it. We want it out there from the beginning and not when it's done. Right. Um, that way, everyone can feel more connected with it. Everyone can feel more excited about it. It's called Remnant Falls. Okay. And it is a script that I have been writing silently for the last five, six years. Wow. Uh, yeah, for, for a very long time, I, I come back to it every now and then, and, and I develop it a little bit more and more. But again, the core of the story is about this young man who is investigating his uh, father's death from mm -hmm. when he was a child. Um, this made him an outcast of society. He got thrown out of a city that is known to be the most dangerous place in the world and it is walled off from the world. Uh, and so he is now an adult and is on a revenge path. He mm -hmm. wants to find out what happened to his father all those years ago and he finds a way to smuggle himself back into the city where he was once a citizen and now thrown out. And uh, his investigation goes a little sideways overnight it takes place in one night one day um and it is it is very exciting it is very exciting uh we're going to be filming the first scene in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and then we're going to put that out online for everybody to see and so, then hopefully we can draw in some investors with this project so with this film with all that you want to do with it if um if you could name a number what would be your budget for this Oof. film I mean, I work really well with with very little, very little, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And the right. people that I work with, my team, my composers, my graphic designers, they are they are just as passionate and willing to get the job done as, as I am. So we're always, you know, stretching our backs uh, for these projects and not, and we don't ask for too much. That being said, I think we can make this film for maybe 10,000, okay. you know, right around there. I think that's what we're going to be looking for and that's what we're going to be asking for. But uh, to get us started, I'm going to be uh, first funding the first couple of scenes oh. just to get us up and moving. And then uh, hopefully we can get some people in. We've already been talking to a lot of people, uh, investors and people okay. that are interested in doing this. They uh, they just want to read the script yeah. and, and then nobody has read the script yet. I'm oh. still working on it. We're 95 pages in. Um, it's the biggest script I've ever written uh, with Augment. I think that was maybe 40 pages, something like that. Very small, very small. Um, but it's all in here. It right. really is. We do a lot of improv. We go off book and I allow the actors to, to play around with the scene right. and bring whatever bring, it is that they want to, to bring life. into it. Yeah. Yes. So, um, I've already asked you this before, but where do you see Isaac in five years? You did ask me that last time I was here, and I thought about that a lot, um, actually, more so uh, after we talked. Right now, things are going pretty well for me um, with my film critic career that I have going on. I'm very close to getting on to the uh, press list, mm -hmm. which uh, pretty much just means I don't have to show up hours early and mm -hmm. wait in line with uh -huh. everybody else. I get there right when the movie starts and I'm sitting there with the actual press and hopefully we can be getting our reviews on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. I'm working really close with uh, Agents of Fandom um, with that and they're doing incredible work. They do live streaming interviews uh -huh. with actually famous uh, uh, people um, that are doing the Disney Plus shows, all the Marvel and the DC and the Star Wars shows. Um, so our, uh, my involvement with them is, has been growing and I'm very yeah. excited to be with them. And then I, as they're very also passionate about my filmmaking career. Sure. They're very supportive about me doing what it is that I do. So to have everybody's support in all that it is that I'm involved with is, is amazing. That's you know? awesome. So where can our audience find you? You guys can find me on Instagram at it's Isaac Joel. You can find me on Facebook, Isaac Joel. 
Uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's a new channel with uh, my latest work. We have behind the scenes for Augment. The trailer is out on there. And uh, if you look me up on Amazon Prime as well, you'll find uh, Shadow Valley and Augment. And you guys can watch that today. There it is. Yeah. And it was a pleasure having you Thank here you again with me. us on season two. And we will be keeping our eye on you, Isaac. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you for joining us today here at Desert Wind Days, and we'll catch you next time. Today's episode of Desert Wood Days with Kathy Blaze was sponsored today by Colobarts Entertainment. Visit them at colobartsent.com.